Yeah, I also don't give a lot of conference talks, so excuse me if I'm a little nervous. Um, so my name is Daisy, and today I will be talking to you about how to leverage sensors and open source software um, to improve your kitchen skills, and how I incorporated two of my very different interests into a personal project, which is still a work in progress. I did it primarily as a way for me to learn more about both things. So a little about myself, um, I'm a freelance developer and writer currently based in Berlin. I'm originally from Toronto. Um, I enjoy learning about new technologies and I'm quite passionate about open source software and how to leverage it for everyday use. So I love to bake and a while ago I became interested in making my own sourdough bread. And for those of you who aren't familiar, sourdough is a type of bread that, due to its fermentation process, is a much healthier alternative to store-bought bread. Um, the naturally occurring acids and long fermentation process helps to break down the proteins and gluten, making it more digestible for the body. And I also like how every loaf comes out quite differently, like a piece of art, and it's also quite tasty. Um, starting your own cultures is really simple. Uh, you basically take flour of basically any grain and mix it with water, cover it with a breathable lid, and then put it somewhere warm and away from light. And after a few hours, you want to observe it to see if any air pockets form. Those are signs that bacteria is forming. And, uh, and then after 12 to 24 hours, or until you see it start to get watery, you want to get rid of half of the mixture and then fill it with more flour and water and repeat this process until you have a lively living and breathing fermented culture. And then once it's very bubbly and active, you can take part of it to make your bread. It will act as a natural leavening agent to make your bread rise without the need for commercial yeast. Mm. And, but working with natural starters is quite tricky because they are very sensitive to temperature and humidity. Since it's like a living and breathing organism, its growth is kind of uncertain and it varies a lot. And it's kind of like taking a, care of a pet or a plant. And I've had to throw out a few batches simply because it contracted too much mold. So parameters like humidity and temperature have to be closely observed. Um, a while ago, I attended a Go meetup in Berlin where I learned about an open source monitoring system called Prometheus, which is written in Go and is quite popular. Um, I enjoyed the community, I liked the community and I felt it was welcoming and I wanted to learn more about the project. So the ecosystem of Prometheus consists of the main server and a time series database, an alert manager, its own query language, and there's a bunch of client libraries and also custom exporters. The uh, server itself was designed to be non-clustered uh, on purpose as a way to be simple and reliable. So it's a system that can monitor uh, large-scale distributed systems, but it's also very efficient on a single node system, and you can put it on things like Raspberry Pis. And when I attended PromCon, which is the conference surrounding the, the software, I, uh, I, heard, I heard a talk that gave me inspiration about how to leverage Prometheus for my own uses. So in this talk, this person had encountered mold in his apartment, and he was told by his janitor that he needed to avoid the dew point in order to combat this problem. So he decided to purchase some inexpensive microcontrollers and sensors, and he installed a, a Prometheus node exporter on it, and he started to monitor the temperature and humidity and air pressure of his apartment in order to figure out the dew point. So this gave me an idea. Um, I thought a great way for me to get hands-on experience and learn more about Prometheus's capabilities and components was to set it up to monitor the humidity and temperature of my sourdough cultures. Um, what kind of insights could I gain from the metrics? For example, what's the optimal environment for, to avoid mold? Um, in the next half of this talk, I will go through the process I took to work on this project and what I learned along the way. So a quick rundown of the steps I took. I got my hands on two Raspberry Pis, and then I ordered um, some Bosch BME280 sensors. This is a digital sensor that can measure temperature, humidity, and air pressure, and you can order it for three or four year olds on eBay. And then I connected them together based on a wiring diagram I found online. 
And then on the Raspberry Pi, I installed the Raspbian Lite operating system, and then I enabled the I2C interface. I2C is a protocol that allows uh, one device to exchange data with one or more connected device. So in this case, th so that the sensor can communicate with the Raspberry Pi. Next, I needed an exporter to be able to export the metrics being generated from the sensor. So I need an exporter that runs in the Raspberry Pi. Um, an exporter is basically a program that translates metrics in, uh, from other systems into a format that Prometheus can understand. So, so you can find these exporters. Uh, so you might be able to find exporters that already exist for the machines you want to get metrics from, or you can always make your own. And I will briefly go through the steps of how to create one in Go. Um, and I chose Go because it's a fairly simple language that's great for systems programming. So first, you need to import the Prometheus client library of whatever language you chose, in this case, Go. And then you want to create a collector type and uh, make Prometheus aware of your collector type. And then, and the client libraries offer four core metric types, counters, gauges, histograms, and summaries. For this exporter, I only need gauges because I only need something that represents a value that will go up or down. And these metrics will get returned whenever I hit the metrics endpoint. And then I need to create an HTTP handler to actually expose the metrics endpoint and then start listening for HTTP connections. So once I have the exporter running and I go to the endpoint, I see something like this. The exposition format is a line-by-line -line text based format and uh, each metric has a help and type comment line associated with it. So now Prometheus can come over the network and export these metrics being exported by the exporters running on the Raspberry Pi. So now that I have the hardware and software set up, I put everything together and I decided to go with a control group and an experiment group. So I put one batch of sourdough near the heater. Uh, now it's time to start the server. So uh, before we do that, we have to configure it with a YAML file. So in the YAML file, I tell the server which endpoints to scrape and how frequently to scrape it. So in this example, I tell it to scrape it every 60 seconds. And then after I start the server, I can hit the default metrics endpoint and see something like this. So every time the humidity or temperature changes, the exporter will export these metrics, and Prometheus will scrape it and then store it in its local time series database. And now I can use the scrape data to create dashboards. And in Grafana is a really popular option, and I've used it here as well. Um, PromptQL is the Prometheus query language. And you can use it to answer a lot of ad hoc questions about your system. But for this simple use case, uh, where I'm using one-dimensional gauges, I really only need to display the values. Uh, and in the Prometheus ecosystem, alerting is uh, done with two components, the server and the alert manager. So you define rules in the Prometheus server for it to continuously evaluate. And when it fires off those alerts, the alert manager will receive it, do logic on it, and do the actual work of sending it to your email or Slack. And so I could create alerts to tell me when the actual server is down or if the humidity or temperature falls below a certain mark. Um, so this project is really a work in progress because troubleshooting sourdough could go on and on. And, um, and, but now that I've got all the components working, I'm trying to decide what next steps I should take. Like, should I try to control the humidity and temperature in some way? Or should I just observe it and maybe like take notes uh, for each bacon taste session? And, uh, and my, uh, my goals for this project were initially a little vague, but I learned a lot during it and I have some ideas of how to expand on it. And I hope that uh, this talk will give anyone with similar goals uh, and ideas to get started. Um, some takeaways are that uh, combining two unrelated things together I found was like a really fun way for me to learn more about both. And uh, Raspberry Pis are really fun to use and now I really want to get more of it. And I don't work in the uh, ops space, so for me this project was a really neat way for me to gain some practical experience in monitoring tools. 
And I also learned that there's still a lot about bread making and monitoring strategies for me to explore and discover. And here are some resources. And feel free to contact me if you have ideas for me, if you feel like collaborating. Thank you.